Hi, welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to draw and paint a zinnia in watercolor. This is a really simple tutorial. This is great for beginners if you want to learn how to use watercolors. We're going to be painting from light to dark, and this flower is made out of very simple shapes. Zinnias are one of my favorite flowers. I planted some outside the studio, and if you've been following me on Instagram, you'll see a ton of pictures of zinnias on there. If you keep watching this video at the very end, I'll show you how to plant zinnias. Today, I'm also excited to announce that I'm going to be using my own brand of watercolor paper. And you should be able to buy it next week on Amazon, if all goes well. This is 140 pound cold press, nine by 12 watercolor paper. This is this paper that I use in all of my tutorials. So get excited, you can soon own Mr. Otter watercolor paper. And it also comes with two brushes and one of them I'm going to be using today. All you need are basic watercolor supplies. You need watercolor paper, a set of watercolors, I'm using a round number 10 brush, and yes, this is our very own, this is our very own paintbrush that will come with the set. It's actually a two pack of watercolor paper, and then you also get a flat brush and this round brush, a number 10. But of course, use whatever you have. It's just a simple eight color watercolor set, a paper towel, a pencil to draw it with, and water. Let's get started. First, we're going to draw the zinnia. Also, this is optional, you can use tape if you want to tape your borders. Okay, so I'm just going to be taping a square. So I'm basically just taping a frame. So once you've taped your border, let's go ahead and draw our zinnia. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is draw the center of the zinnia, so just like this little circle. And I'm going to be centering this on the paper. If you wanna make sure it's in the center, you know, just lightly draw across kind of where they intersect, that should be about the middle of your paper. I'm going to be drawing dark, but make sure you're drawing really lightly, almost so that you can't even, you don't even need to erase it. So to begin with, we're going to draw the middle of the zinnia, and we're just going to start by drawing a circle in the center of our paper. So this will be the middle of the flower. From the middle of this flower, what you're gonna do is just kind of find the center of it, and then kind of draw curvy, like spider legs coming out, kind of bending around, because this is a round shape, and these are actually things that kind of curve in the center part of the flower. So it kind of looks like a little mint or, or something like that. And now to make the petals easy because there's so many petals and it can get a little bit complicated, they almost remind me of fish scales. Each section, so we have like a row of petals here, we have a row of petals here, we have a row of petals here. We're just gonna draw those circles that make those rows. So the middle part of the circle comes just like, just a little bit far out like this. And then you're going to be drawing another one, but this one is going to be a little bit further away from it. And so we're going to basically be drawing five of these lines. So we've drawn one, two, this one's gonna be closer, three, four, and then five. And this is gonna be our last row of petals. If it looks a little skewampus, you might wanna fix that now because it's gonna be harder to fix when you have petals. Now we're gonna come into the middle, we're gonna draw some of these little yellow circles. There's probably like 10. Three, some are big, some are small. Then we have these really skinny little petals that are coming out of here. And there's not very many of these either. There's probably about 10 of these too. They're almost like these little worm things that are just coming out. All right, now we're gonna start drawing these petals. And the first row of these petals are going to come all the way to this first circle line right here. And what you want to avoid doing is putting them too close together. And also, if you look at the zinnia petals, they are rounded, they're not pointed, they're round. Think of them as being almost like fingernails. That's almost the shape that the end is. It's like not pointed, but a little bit round. They come straight into the middle. There's probably five to seven of these. And then these next ones, we're gonna bring all the way to this next line. So you can start in between these ones if you wanna make it really easy. Exact, but you know, in the real image, they're definitely not in the middle. If you can see, they're kind of pushed, this one's pushed off to the side. This one kind of is in the middle. So some of them might be, so if you wanna draw it that way, that's fine. You're starting to get maybe a little bit bigger. And if you have one here and you wanna put one back here, you can just draw two in there, that's fine. So you can make some doubles in there to make this part a little bit fuller. And basically now what you're going to do, think about fish scales. We're gonna come in between these and now bring these petals to the next line. So I'm just coming in here, I'm bringing that out to that very farthest line. And I'm moving around the flower. I'm not staying in one spot for very long so I don't end up adding way too many petals in that area. And then after you add those kind of around it, you can add a few more just to fill it up just a little bit more. 
I usually will just look for big gaps that look like they might need something in there. And then this next row, you're just gonna do the same thing. So continue drawing your next petals to the outside of the flower. And this will be our last row, but then we're going to fill it in and make it feel really full of petals. So again, just work your way around the flower. Try not to stay in one spot drawing petals for too long. And try not to point your petals, which as you can see, that's hard for me. And then this really is where you're gonna use fish scale technique. You wanna make sure any of these little gaps, like here, I'm gonna fill one in, and then I'm gonna fill in these gaps. You don't want any holes. The zinnias have tons of petals. And at this point, they kind of start to wrap around and fold back behind. So we're just seeing some of those ones. If you're going to be using a pen, if you want this to look a little bit illustrative, you can use a pen to outline this and then erase the pencil. I'm going to just be using pencil. So I'm just gonna lightly erase some of these circular lines. You might have to redraw some of the lines that you erase. So erase any of the lines that you don't want to use and then draw some of those shapes back in. All right, now we have our flower drawn. Let's go ahead and start painting. So grab your paints. If you are left-handed, put them on the left side of your paper. If you are right-handed, put them on the right side. So just move your paper over, grab your paints, your paintbrush, your paper towel, and your water. And we are ready to start. We're going to be using the technique where we paint light to dark. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. The first thing we're going to do is paint in this light yellow area in here, because this will be the lightest, brightest part. And for that, all you need to do is just grab some pure yellow. We don't even need to make a puddle. We'll just grab some yellow. You don't wanna have a ton of water on your paintbrush to do this and just fill in any of those little yellow circles or those little tubes that we drew out. So you just kinda of paint in some circles. You can also make these bigger. If you're young and you're having, you'd have a really hard time painting around these, make them bigger. So now we're going to make our light pink fuchsia whatever color you want. Now let's make a really big puddle, a puddle that's so big we can fill enough paint to fill in this whole flower. I'm gonna add some red to it. You can add a little purple. I might add a little bit of yellow. All right, now this probably looks pretty dark. So it looks pretty dark in your tray, but when you paint it, it's actually pretty light. So try it out on your paper towel. That looks okay to me. Get some on your brush. I'm just gonna kind of dab it on my paper towel a little bit and be so careful and you wanna just paint in this whole zinnia with that light pink, avoiding these yellow areas. So this is the hardest part, it's just in the middle. One tip if you're just starting to do watercolors is to avoid scrubbing your paper. That's where you go back and forth over your paper and it kind of ends up ruining your paper and kind of makes it start to disintegrate. So really once you go over it, just go ahead and move to the next section and you do not need to use this color. If you want, you could use Whatever color you want, I have orange zinnias, purple zinnias, white zinnias. They come in a lot of different colors. Now we're gonna let this layer dry, and while it's drying, let's just go ahead and make this color a little bit darker. So how we make it darker is we're going to add more red to it. You could add more purple, you could add, or violet, whatever you wanna call it, you could add just a little bit more color. So I'm just adding a little bit more red and a tiny bit of yellow. Okay, so I've just darkened this up just a little bit. I could add a little bit of purple to it if I wanted to. You need to create a sense of depth. So it looks like there's a lot of petals that these aren't just really thin, but that it's a full flower. So to create that depth, we need to create some shadows. But first, let's go ahead and just work with this center area right here. This is gonna be really dark in the end, so let's just add a little bit more color to it right now. So let's start painting in some of these petals. These petals have color on the inside of them. Just think you're like painting the inside of the petal, almost like it's folding in. And again, be careful not to paint over those yellow areas like I just did. And you're just gonna paint the, the middle of it. And if you're getting petals like me, just get some of the paint off your brush. So we are painting in layers right now. So almost like cat ears, I guess, is a way of thinking about it. You're just painting the inside part of those. And then when you come to the petals behind it, just think you're gonna paint the inside of that. And if you wanna smooth out the edges of these shadows, just blot your brush off on your, rinse your brush off, blot it on your paper towel, and then just kinda of go around the edges with a damp brush. And you just wanna be careful not to go all the way to the edge because you see I kinda of lost that light area. So you can smooth out those shadows if you want. So just think bunny ears, I guess. That's kind of a way of thinking about it. Just the inside of that bunny ear. And you wanna do this because this is what's going to separate the petals from each other. And if you get too much paint on your brush, just blot it off. So we're still kind of doing these bunny ears, just painting the inside of the petals with a little bit of a darker pink, but leaving the outside light. 
these very, very outside petals are going to be completely dark, so you don't need to worry about them. If you want, you can kind of stop at whatever stage you think it looks right. But we're going to be painting in layers, so we're painting from the lightest area to the darkest. And we're going to be adding the details very, very last. So the very, very outside ones, they're going to be darker, but go ahead and just paint them in completely with that shadow color. So once you've kind of painted all those in so they look like bunny ears, we're going to add a darker shadow. So to darken this red up, again, we're just working in the same puddle. We're just going to add more color to it. So a little bit more red. And I'm actually, I might add a little bit of violet to it to darken it up just a little bit. So to darken that puddle up and go ahead and use your paper towel to see how dark that color is. And then what you're gonna do is paint in the center section with that color. So it's really dark. You might not be able to see your pencil, but that's okay. And then with that color, you're kind of gonna bring it out and around these yellow parts. So just use the tip of your paintbrush to kind of come out and around these shapes. Because we need it to look like there's some shadows in here behind these. So just kind of, I'm almost tracing them with my paintbrush. Just going around all of these yellow shapes. You don't need to go around the very top edge of them. So we have this nice dark area in the center. And we're just gonna start bringing it out. Anywhere we see these shadows that are coming inside of these, we're gonna put them in. And these ones, you might wanna soften up just a little bit. So once you put them in, especially these first ones, the ones behind it aren't as critical, but these first ones, rinse your brush off, blot it off, and then just kinda go around the edge of that to just, I'm just softening up that really hard line, almost with a damp brush. Then take that same color, and then you're gonna come into any of these areas that almost look like a little V you're gonna come into them with that darker color. It's almost like the, the bottom part of those bunny ears. We're just basically darkening up these shadows and really, really trying to separate these petals from each other. It's almost like you're painting in just like little diamonds. So we're kind of trying to add some depth here. So anywhere you think would be the shadows, just add that darker color. So it's almost like we're just making like a smaller little bunny ear inside of it or shape. And these outside petals, I'm just completely painting them with the darker color. So you can see we have a little bit of a darker color here. I'm gonna darken up this puddle a little bit by adding more red to it and violet. Okay, so just make sure this middle part is dry when we do this next part. I'm just darkening up some of these petals back here. While we're waiting for it to dry, we can paint these outside petals. So I have this darker color and I'm just gonna paint in these solid outer petals. Okay, now since these ones are so dark, we might need to darken up some of these petals next to them because it's kind of folding over and going back. So I just dipped my brush in the water a little bit. I don't want it to extremely dark, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more shading on some of these outer petals by painting a triangle and then again, coming around the edges with my paintbrush. So I can still see the difference between that petal and the one behind it, but it's a little bit darker than it was before. So you can darken up some of those back petals if you would like, just kind of go around them. My brush really just has a little bit of water on it. It's not quite as dark as it was. I'm just kind of almost painting over the white by the edges, just to darken it up a little bit so it looks like it's folding back. So I just darkened up the edges a little bit, and now we need to get that middle part darker. So even darker than the color I have. So a little bit of purple, a little bit of red. So you have a nice dark color, and what you wanna do is just create like a star in the middle with five sides. And then I'm rinsing my brush off, blotting it off on my paper towel. Then you're just gonna carry those edges out. So I'm just coming around the edges with my paintbrush and fanning it out. So I wanted it to look darker in the center. Then I take, take that same dark color, come back in, and you're gonna paint around that middle area. Make sure your brush isn't too wet. And then you can come anywhere there's petals, you can just bring that super dark color out into them, into the lines that would be in between them. So it would be like a shadow maybe on the other one because we want it to look like it's kind of pinched in here. So we need to add a little bit more shading. So at this point, you can add more shadows with this color if you like, you can keep it like this. Just try not to overwork it. It's important to let some layers dry before you move on to the next ones. And if you feel like any of your petals are kind of coming together a little bit too much, just take your colors. You don't want to outline them, but just think of shadows like Maybe a shadow in here. So this dark color is really nice to just add some of these little tiny shadows. And you can keep going. It's just gonna make it look like these are just a little bit more pinched, a little bit fuller. And again, you can add more shading around the edges. This is your point to kind of touch up anything you feel that needs to be fixed or touched up. So I just wanna make sure all of my edges are nice and a little bit darker because I want them to be in the shadows a little bit. 
So I'm just, basically my paintbrush is just a little wet and I'm just going over them. And anywhere I feel like I need just a little bit of some separation in here. So again, add more details if you'd like to. You can stop now, you can keep painting. I'm just gonna stop now. I'll probably look at it later and feel like I need a few more little dark areas, but it's okay. So you can just go on forever. But what I wanna do is paint the background now and I'm gonna be using black. You can use whatever color you want. You can use a light blue, anything really. I'm just going to be using black because I just feel like having a nice contrast with this one. You can mix up a little puddle with black. It's so saturated, but I can still, I still don't want a ton of light and dark. I want it to be a pretty flat color. So I'm not gonna be using as much water. After you get your background color mixed up, you wanna start painting. If you're left-handed, you wanna start on the right side. If you're right-handed, start on the left side. Go ahead and take your background color. You can redefine some of these petals. Again, with your background, it's really important not to overwork your paper. If you made your petals too pointy, this is a good time to round them up. Let it dry, take your tape off, sign it, and you are finished. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you learned a little bit about watercolor and some techniques. Again, you can keep going back in and adding some more details, adding a little bit more shading, but this is one of my favorite flowers. So, since you stayed till the end, I will show you how I grew these. So my grandma gave me the dried flowers that she had from her yard and you just break them up and these are the black seeds that are inside of them. Then you just till them into the dirt. So you just kind of spread them out on the dirt, rake them up a little bit so they get mixed in with the dirt and then water them and that's it. And then they grow and they're just so bright and beautiful and butterflies and hummingbirds and all sorts of creatures come to see them. Thank you so much for joining me today on Mr. Otter Studio. I would love to see your work on Instagram. Use hashtag Mr. Otter Studio Zinnia. I hope um, you've enjoyed your summer, those of you that have been enjoying, those of you that have had a break from school and that you're excited to get back. I hope you have a wonderful day and thanks again for joining me today and painting with me and drawing with me and we will see you next time.